Hey guys, my name is Alvas, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing my top 10 best looking Formula 1 cars of all time. Now, don't forget, if you enjoy the content here and you want to support the channel, then like the video and subscribe as well. We're almost at 11,000 subscribers, and it'll be fantastic to get there before the end of the year, and we're so, so close. So, uh, yeah, if you uh, want to support me, then just subscribe. That'd be amazing, and I'd be so thankful. But anyway, let's get into the video. Now, before we quickly jump into that top 10, I would just like to say how I picked my top 10 greatest uh, looking F1 cars of all time. Now, uh, unlike some people, I actually don't just look at the livery. For me, it's three things that make it a fantastic looking car. Number one is obviously the livery. I think that that's what is probably the most important thing. Number two is actually the aerodynamics. I think that is seriously important. And number three, the uh, helmet that the driver wears or uh, whichever driver I sort of pick uh, that I think uh, sort of his helmet looks, matches better to the car. And the reason for this is mostly because of uh, cars like the 2014 Caterham. I think that livery is amazing. I love that green. It's like a really bright British racing green or something like that. And I think it looks really cool with the contrast of uh, or the way it blends in with the helmet of Kamui Kobayashi. But the aerodynamics of that car, as you guys remember in 2014, is beyond offensive. So that's how I sort of pick my cars. It's a little bit different because I, I try to take in everything. Maybe even the tyres to be fair and the wheel colour, everything like that. So that's how I sort of pick my top 10. But anyway, enough of that shenanigans. Uh, let's get into what you really want to know, which is my top 10. Let's go. Now in 10th place, it is the Ferrari 248 F1 from 2006. Driven, of course, by uh, most famously Michael Schumacher and Felipe Massa. Now, that car, of course, did not was not one of uh, Michael's amazing championship winning cars. Uh, it finished second in the Constructors that year with five wins, seven poles and 19 podiums. Now, this is actually my favorite Schumacher car of all time and, of course, gets the number 10 spot. And it's actually the only Ferrari on this list. And uh, the biggest reason for that is it's just so iconic. What I find absolutely amazing is that if you search up F1 cars on Google Images, if you ignore all the modern cars, you can see Michael Schumacher's Ferrari right there. And it's because it is so iconic. It is, if anything, the quintessential Formula 1 car that every single person knows. Michael Schumacher's red Ferrari. And I absolutely love it. More specifically, by the way, the uh, Marlboro uh, livery one. That, that one very, very specifically, because there was actually sort of two after the uh, cigarette company got removed. But it's just amazing. Everything about that car from 2006, and that's my personal favourite, is just I absolutely love it from that incredible uh, iconic paintwork to the lit to the uh, uh, sponsorship and also to Michael Schumacher's famous red helmet such an incredible design so iconic and it's just going to be timeless isn't it the seven times world champion and it's just I absolutely love that car and for me it is the greatest uh, looking Ferrari of all time. Now, in number nine is the Lotus, actually, from the 60s. Now, it's not really... This one is a bit of a different one because it's actually not a specific car, but I'm talking about the famous and iconic Lotus cars from the 60s that were driven by the likes of Jim Clark, Graham Hill, you know, legends of our sport. And this, in my opinion, is one of the most beautiful designs in British racing history ever. Such a British classic, the Lotus. And, I mean, just the colour combination is incredible. A, a proper British racing green and just that touch of yellow. And the entire car itself, so open, so almost bare. There's no aero really to it. It's, the, it's that classic sort of old school cigar, cigar shape. Uh, the engine almost completely just uh, out in the out in the open and obviously driven by absolute legends. I mean, I love the look of this car. It is so classic. It's what, you know, when people talk about the 50s and 60s, that's the car that first sort of springs to mind. Uh, and I absolutely love it. And especially that color combination is one of the most famous in British racing history and for good reason. I mean, the green and the yellow is a fantastic complement. The car is so clean and it just really reflects sort of the times. I mean, just the size of the wheels and how dangerous it was. I mean, when you think about what the cars look now with all the safety devices, those men were racing literally in arguably just coffins with a bit of paint on top of them. So it's just incredible what they were doing. But the actual car itself, and of course, like I said, this is not a specific car, but that whole 60s sort of era of Lotus. And not only was it a fantastic period for them uh, success-wise, because they did win a few championships, but like I said, it's, this car for me is absolutely gorgeous and a British racing classic. Now, in eighth place, it is the Brabham BT45 from 1976 and 1977 as well. Uh, designed by uh, Gordon Murray, of course, one of the most famous car designers uh, in the world. Um, it wasn't a very successful car back then. I mean, uh, it only, I actually had uh, no wins, four podiums, and only one pole position, and also eight different drivers in two years. And I won't name all of them, but... 
uh, despite the lack of success, it is by far one of the best looking Formula One cars of all time. The livery alone is fantastic. And uh, the reason why I say uh, is from those two years is because the livery actually changed uh, in 78. But the Martini uh, racing, uh, the Martini uh, racing livery for Brabham, oh my god, this is an incredible livery. That red and the way the lines just go with everything is just wow. I love this car. This is the 1970s, just absolutely personified. I mean, look at the size of those rear tires. Those have got to be the fattest rear tires I've ever seen in my life. And everything about this car I love. I love the aero. It's just got, you know, the, the front of it. It's got some kind of like uh, crazy, like almost like nostrils or something. And of course, the clean design, the fantastic color. That is, I just cannot stop looking at this car. I think it's one of the most underrated designs of all time. And I absolutely love it. And it absolutely deserves to be in eighth place. Love the Brabham BT45 from 77 and 76. Now in seventh place is a car that needs no introduction. It is the McLaren MP4-4 from 1988. Now not only is the livery and the car famous, so are its drivers, maybe even more so with the uh, pairing of Alain Prost and Ayrton Senna. Uh, this arguably actually may be even a more iconic car than Michael Schumacher's Ferrari, but you know, maybe you, got, you guys can debate that. Not only is it iconic, but it is also very successful. Uh, it is the, uh, the most successful actually car in any one season with 15 wins, 15 poles and 25 podiums, taking of course the Constructors and the Drivers' Championships with Ayrton Senna. Now, like I said, this is probably, to some people, even more iconic than Michael Schumacher's Ferrari. And I'm talking about the Ayrton Senna and McLaren combination in 88. I mean, what can I say about this car that has not already been said by people? I mean, this arguably is one of the best colour combinations of all time. The contrast between that incredible paintwork and the Marlboro livery, the, uh, the day glow red McLaren and Ayrton Senna's famous yellow helmet. It's just incredible. I mean, pictures of it on any track, and especially in Monaco. For some reason, pictures of it in Monaco just scream wow, and it is such a memorable car. This is this might go down as the best Formula 1 car of all time, and I'm sure many people will have it in number one spot. I, I would definitely understand that. But just looking at it is just wow. The color combination, those black wheels, fantastic. Those fat tires from the 80s, we definitely miss that, and I love the fact that they're slicks as well. I'm not really a fan of the grooves, but... This car is so iconic. I mean, once again, I repeat myself. What can I say about this car that has not already been said? Driven, of course, by Lewis Hamilton, actually, as well, on Top Gear. That was a really early memory I have of this car. So, yeah, absolutely love it. So iconic. And just that era and that livery is going to be remembered forever and arguably maybe even the greatest of all time. Now moving from one dominant car to another, from 1992 and 1991 it is the Williams FW14. Now it can be the B variant as well, which of course came in 92, but of course I'm talking more about the look of the car. Uh, one, once again, one of the most famous racing cars in Formula 1 history, uh, designed actually by Adrian Newey, very very famous designer, as of course uh, most people know even, even now uh, designs incredible race cars, and driven by the uh, famous Nigel Mansell pairing with uh, Ricardo Patrese as well. Now in those two years, in 1991 and 99. It won 17 races, had 21 pole positions and 38 podiums. Uh, it came second in the uh, Constructors in 91 and then of course dominated the uh, 92 World Constructors Championship uh, with Mansell winning the World Drivers Championship. Now I will actually mention something. Um, perhaps this actually would not have made my list unless I did not do the downfall of Williams series. I forgot how good this car looked and honestly just doing that series and looking through the pictures of what the car uh, looked like, especially with Nigel Mansell's helmet, this is one of the most beautiful cars of all time. How it actually has a lot of sponsors, and some people might think it looks cluttered, but to me, the color combination and Mansell's helmet in particular is so cool. It is such a great design. Once again, black wheels. That seems to be a bit of a theme. Uh, I, I'm really digging the black wheels on the old school cars. Again, slick tires, fat tires. I love, uh, I love those. Uh, that look. And like I said, this color combination and with Mansell's helmet is so clean. The sort of dash of red from Mansell's helmet and the Canon sponsor to, of course, the famous Camel cigarette sponsor. And also comment in the books below if you thought that cigarette sponsors seem to just make Formula One cars look amazing. I don't know what it is, but they just seem to do. And anyway, back on this car. Amazing. It really, to me, it's actually even better than the 88 McLaren. Just something about it. So many colors. It's so special. And I just love it. Once again, like I said, this probably wouldn't even been in my top five unless I did my downfall of Williams series, but it really did make me realize just how gorgeous this car was. And I love everything about it and especially the colors and the clean aerodynamics as well. So yeah, in sixth place is the Williams FW14 or FW14B if you like from 91 and 92. 
Now in number five, we are going to uh, the opposite end of the grid now, uh, from the top to the bottom. We are going to go with the Jordan 191 from 1991, powered by the Ford engine. Now in that season, it was actually driven by five different drivers. Uh, Andrea De Cesare was actually a one uh, was actually the only driver that drove it, I think, throughout the entire season. And also famously, Michael Schumacher for one race at Spa. Now, in terms of the, the uh, performance of the car, it was not very successful at all. Zero wins, zero poles, zero podiums. Uh, but it did score 13 points, which actually was pretty decent at the time, I suppose. Uh, and actually got it fifth in the constructors. So, actually, maybe I'm being a bit harsh. It was actually not that bad for the time. Um, in terms of the car, I am looking at the uh, De Cesare's car, because I think his helmet just really suits that car really, really well. Now... Wow, this car, I mean, it, it actually really catches me by surprise. I mean, the sponsors are the two big things that make it. it there's obviously different variants over the year, but my two favourite is the one with the Tic Tac sponsor and the 7-Up. I mean, just wow. Incredible car. Love the livery. There's something about it that I just think, wow, I would love to have just to look at that car. It's such a cool design. The colours are so bright, so clean. And like I said, De Cesare's is a helmet, I think, really suited with the red and the green. And just, wow, Eddie Jordan really stepped up for that. And I, I don't even know what to say about it. it. just It's one of those cars that just catches me by surprise because you don't really know about it. It's not a very famous car in terms of performance. But when you see it, it really does make you go, wow, the bright blue paintwork up against the green. I mean, this is, you know, obviously in Formula 1, uh, business and sponsors are everything. So, you know, liveries have to go to the side. But when you have that sort of livery and sort of use it with your sponsors it just shows you how cool a car can really really look i mean if this was a championship winning car i would absolutely love it something else that i love about it of course the black wheels <laughs> i need to seriously shut up about that and also i love the front wing of this car as well it's sort of like a little mustache design it sort of goes up at the top and then goes sort of drops for the uh, edges of it and i love that design so i think aerodynamically it looks so clean and one of the best I, for some reason that front that front wing really just gets me and the paint as well like i said this car just completely catches me off guard but i just i seriously seriously love it and once again fantastic sponsors and hats off to eddie jordan for uh <laughs> having a fantastic looking car for his team that is definitely something i'd be proud of and definitely deserves my number five place now in fourth place is the newest car on the list it is the mclaren mp427 from 2012 driven by lewis hamilton and jensen button now although it did not win the championship or the constructors uh uh, championship it did have a very successful time in 2012 winning seven races getting eight pole positions and 13 podiums in the end it, it managed third but like I, if you want to know actually more about uh, mclaren at the time then check out my downfall of mclaren series there's a shameless little plug i'll put it up at the top uh so go check that video out <laughs> there you go and um but yeah back up back to the car i mean wow this era of mclaren i loved who else just thinks that this Vodafone paintwork looks amazing? I think they started it back in 2007, 2006. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, I mean, as soon as they dropped it for 2014, the car just went downhill, in my opinion. But this, and especially the car from 2012, was amazing. And my, one of my favorite McLarens it is actually my favorite McLaren uh, of all time. A great car, amazing livery, and both Jensen and Lewis's helmets really complement it well. Lewis with the more contrast sort of yellow helmet, sort of similar to the Senna from 88 love that and jensen actually sort of similar to the alan prost helmet from 88 as well so there you go um but yeah i think jensen's helmet actually looks better with that car just that splash of blue really makes it um but yeah love that car and especially from 2012 the clean aero this was the time where they were putting just ugly noses there were some weird side pods that mclaren had from 2011 that i was not a fan of but especially in 2012 the noses were just horrific the ferrari especially and the fact and i love the fact that they can make a good looking car a fast car and this was definitely a good looking car so clean and yeah i love the paintwork this in my opinion is the best looking mclaren of all time they're gonna have to do something really special to uh to beat this i mean yes the orange and the blue is nice of the modern day ones but the arrow is just horrendous and these cars oh my god this is when i was really like starting to get into f1 uh properly and watching it and i just looked at this car and thought wow this car is going to stay with me for the rest of my life and it definitely definitely deserves the spot as my favorite mclaren of all time and the number four spot on the list now i must admit that the second and third place cars were so hard to split i was really they, they were split by a whisker and in my opinion i would be happy with any of them uh being in the second place but maybe the uh second car just edges it but this third car is no slouch in third place it is the lotus 9070 the john player special from 1985 driven by the famous Ayrton Senna and elio de angelis i probably butchered his name so i'm really sorry um but here there you go um it was a it was a pretty decent car it finished fourth in the constructors with three wins 
eight pole positions, seven of those coming from Ayrton Senna, and nine podiums. Now, in terms of what really makes this car special for me, and of course I am talking about the Ayrton Senna car, is the paintwork and that John Player special uh, branding and livery. Now, what is amazing, and I think what really makes this, is the fact that if you look, all the sponsors have actually the same colour, that sort of goldy, uh, I don't even know even what the colour is, it's sort of like a gold colour, and all of the sponsors have that, and if you notice, that's actually quite different to uh, a lot of cars. Usually sponsors want to have their own colour, but in this car, it's so clean, it's so consistent, every single sponsor has that John Player special colour, and that makes that just makes the car. Every single sponsor has the same colour, and the contrast against the black, it's such a stealthy design, and the little outlines of... Uh, gold and then the bright yellow helmet of Ayrton Senna it is one of those cars I just wish I could have seen in real life back in 1985 and could you just imagine like seeing that car go past maybe you'd even miss it because it's so stealthy but then that bright yellow helmet would just stand out and I mean I just think wow it is such a good looking car I've seen this on everybody's lists and loads of people have actually put it on number one and I really do not blame them once again the livery makes this car, you know, I love Ayrton's helmet on this, but the livery is magic. The fact that every single sponsor is the same color, the same gold, and the uh, contrast. And this is the big word on this car, contrast. The colors are just fantastic. They, obviously, they don't match, but that's the amazing thing about it. It's so iconic. Uh, in terms of the aerodynamics, once again, very clean. No, no me Nothing messy, nothing ugly. It's so, it just screams 80s once again. It is so iconic, those massive wheels, barely anything on the front wing. And the side pods are clean as well. And the massive, enormous rear spoiler uh, is just incredible. So, yeah, um, wow. I mean, <laughs> an amazing car. And also, even uh, this is actually a bit of a side note. If you look at even like the race suit that Senna wore and all of the kits and everything from that team from that year, and obviously with the John Player special branding, I want to get some of that merch. I need to find some of that vintage stuff wherever it is because I would love to get some my hands on some of that. The race suit, I mean, seeing it in, in that Lotus race suit is amazing and it just everything everything fits together fantastically but once again the car is the centerpiece uh, with Ayrton driving it his helmet the design and the clean car amazing in third place is the 9070 from 1985 good job lotus now like i said the second and third places were so tight i just you could switch these cars around and like i said i would not mind but i think maybe the second car just edges it for me and it's the Braun from 2009, driven by Jensen Button and Rubens Barrichello. Uh, again, a very successful car that won both the drivers and constructors, with Jensen winning the drivers, with 8 wins, 5 pole positions, and 15 podiums. Now, this car might go down in history as one of the most unique cars of all time. Something I find fascinating about it is that it was actually hated when it first came out because people thought, you know, what? They thought it was horrible. They thought it was so boring. I mean, it's just a white car with like some kind of high vis stripe on it. I mean, what's so special about that? But for me, this could be, like I said, the most unique car of all time. Please, someone in the comments, name me another car that has this specific high vis sort of high vis yellow color and that's what i'm going to call it i don't know if it, has, if it has a specific name but that's what i'm going to call it uh high vis yellow <laughs> um but yeah someone please tell me if another car had this because i don't think it did this is such a cool design honestly it's so simple and that's the thing sometimes the best things are just simple uh i think jensen button's helmet looks amazing with it and i'm not talking about his regular blue one but the one that's actually in brawn colors that's my uh, sort of favorite i, I really actually don't like the, his regular helmet with this car but his sort of uh, obviously the, the high vis yellow ones they look amazing um and like i said this car in pictures just pops and makes me go did that seriously exist like who actually thought up of that because it's so weird and i love weird it's i mean when you compare it to the rest of the grid it's almost like it stands out more than any other car and like i said people hated it because they thought it was so you know it's just a white car with like a stripe on it like i said um, one thing I also will mention is that my favourite variant of it is the one that actually has no, has barely any sponsors. Maybe just the Virgin one, because over the course of the season, it did get sort of more sponsors and everything. And in my opinion, it actually got a little bit cluttered towards the end. But the initial car with the initial sort of yellow helmet with just the Virgin sponsor for me is... Uh, incredible and I love the wheel design as well the yellow uh, on the wheels that sort of continues the design and the clean aero of course this was 2009 where uh, there, there was massive aero changes and the design was so clean and just <laughs> just looking at it I still can't believe someone actually drew someone actually had to design this and if you remember Braun at the time it was a pretty last minute job actually so amazing I really think this could go down as the most unique car of all time in terms of design I mean when did you ever think that something like this could ever exist and wow 
I just love this car. I could talk about it forever. I don't think, you know, that maybe their race suits weren't as cool as the Lotus ones, but the car to me looks even better because it just looks so iconic and the pictures of it make me go, you, you just look at that car and you look at all the other ones and you think there's definitely one that stands out there, doesn't it? And it's incredible how simple it is, but how effective it is. It is iconic and I seriously hope someone copies it in some way or something because I want to see that color back. That high vis yellow was genius. Whoever thought of that, I hats off to you because it was an amazing paint job. I absolutely disagree with anyone that says it's boring because in my opinion, it was, like I said, one of the most unique in all of history, if not the most unique Formula 1 livery ever. Absolutely. Oh my God. I just love this car so, so much. Number two, the 2009 Braun. Now in first place and by a very, very long way, in my opinion, is the Renault R26 from 2006, driven by Fernando Alonso and Giancarlo Fisichella. It, uh, it was, a, again, a really successful car, won eight races, seven poles and 19 podiums in 2006. Again, taking the drivers and constructors with, the, uh, with Fernando Alonso, beating Michael Schumacher uh, for, the, uh, for the Drivers' Championship. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, this car and uh, this actually is not, this car's actually not mentioned that very, that often. But for me, ever since I first saw this car and it was on Top Gear when Richard Hammond got to drive it, um, something just clicks in my brain and I go, that is it. That is the best Formula 1 car of all time. Nothing is ever going to beat that. There's something in my brain that I just think that color combination, how it just is so vibrant. It pops completely. The yellow and the blue, uh, of course, of the uh, alcohol sponsor. And I just can't put into words how much I love this car. It is not mentioned that often, but it's so crazy. And it's almost the opposite of the 9070 there and Senna drove because while that car was quite subtle and, you know, only had a sort of, you know, it was black and quite stealthy. This is the complete opposite. This is in your face. This is loud. And everything from the aero to the wheels, perhaps the only thing I don't like about this car is the groove tires. I'd love for it to have slicks. But other than that, the aggressive aero, I mean, it looks like a spaceship. The amazing helmet design uh, that Fernando Alonso had, I think it really matches it really, really well. And I mean, <sighs> that livery is wow. I cannot tell you guys, like I said, ever since I first saw that car, that is it. That's my favorite of all time. Nothing is ever going to beat that. And I think it's such an underrated paint job, in my opinion, that doesn't get uh, sort of as much plaudits as it should. But that is my number one. I can't. I've sort of given reasons for why I love all the others, but all, all the other ones. But for this one, I can't put into words why I love it. It's something in my brain that I just look at it and think that's the most beautiful Formula One car I've ever seen in my life, and arguably will never be beaten. I mean, something seriously amazing is going to have to come out, and I don't think it will. That's the most iconic for me. It just resonates with me so so much, and quite apt. Obviously, uh, Fernando Alonso also retiring from Formula One in 2018. But yeah, the R26 driven by Fernando Alonso for me is the greatest and the most beautiful looking Formula One car of all time. The best livery, amazing aerodynamics that make it look out of this world, and a fantastic driver uh, helmet pairing as well. I honestly cannot explain why it just clicks with me. I mean, it's obviously a loads of opinion and some people will, will think completely different and that's absolutely fine. But for me, in my brain, it clicks. It's the best of all time. It is the GOAT. But there you go, guys. That is my top 10 greatest looking Formula 1 cars of all time. Now, once again, that is just my opinion, but I would love to know what you guys think. And I'd love to know your top five, top 10, or even just one car that you think is the best of all time and also a reason for it. So if you put like uh, my favorite top car is this, put a little reason for it. Why do you love it so much and why does it resonate with you? So once again, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, I try and put a lot of effort into it and I really... It was definitely one of the most difficult videos I've ever had to make. It was so tough, um, but I've enjoyed it so much. These are some incredible looking race cars. And I mean, I can't wait to see what we get in 2019. I mean, that's the thing about Formula 1. We get brand new cars every single year and they're all iconic in their own way, I suppose. But that is my top 10. So yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed the video and don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Like I said, I'm almost at 11,000 and I'd be so thankful to get there uh, before the end of the year. And I really hope you guys have a very, very good Christmas and a very good new year as well. But yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.